the government is talking up a more tech-based uh, public service as they look for ways to make cuts. But there are real fears uh, that greater use of digital technology will mean more computers and fewer jobs. So is this push something to be wary of? Professor Miriam Lips is Victoria University's Chair in e-Government. She joins us now. Uh, good morning to you, Professor. Good morning. Um, where is New Zealand at in this uh, path towards uh, more e-governments? Have we got big ground to, to make up and I guess big cost savings that we could gain? Um, New Zealand is among uh, quite a few countries around the world looking for implementing e-government solutions and that may not be surprising if you look around in society where a lot of people are already using the internet and uh, smartphones and other technology applications so it's actually quite um, normal I would say for government to catch up with what's happening in society and in the private sector. So what sort of gains could we look at here? Are we talking um, big new computer systems that will uh, eliminate hundreds and potentially thousands of jobs? Uh, we're looking at a wide variety of applications, I would say, and the applications depend on what kind of things you would like to achieve. So I would see technology as an enabler of change, not as a driver of change, also not as an objective, but an instrument to achieve new ways of working in the public se service. So it will really depend on what we're looking at. Uh, and also, therefore, it depends on, on what kind of new ways of working you would like to achieve in terms of um, what kind of jobs may be on the line or not. Also, I think the, um, um, the fact that jobs may be on the line is a bit of a simplistic argument. Um, um, we need to um, take into account um, that we're we looking at new ways of working. Uh, that may also require new jobs to come in. So the, the issues are much more complex than just jobs on the line. Uh, we're looking at a very complex change management process here. OK, the key thing here is, I mean, yes, there are jobs on the line, but we could be creating new jobs. Is there a programme that's going in place with the e-government push to make sure that we're retraining people and that we have new jobs for those people who are losing jobs to go to? Um, there's not uh, a single programme. We're looking at a wide variety of applications across the public service. Many projects are um, at stake here. Um, so it's, uh, we can't speak about a particular programme. We need to look at single initiatives and what is happening there. And again, these are um, quite long-term, complex change processes. So within each initiative, we need to see what needs to be done and what kind of changes need to be made, including uh, whether jobs will be lost or sure. not. Sure. Um, I know I've seen the Prime Minister talk about the Air New Zealand showing the, the check-in facilities as one sort of example of how it can work. Is that the type of thing we're talking about here, say for, um, say you're applying for a passport or a visa or some government document, you might be able to do it um, all online in future and not have to deal with anybody? Uh, that could be an option. Uh, I don't think that we will end up in a situation where you don't end up with anybody in the public service. Some services are just too complex to be uh, fully dealing with online. Also, we should not forget that uh, government has a unique position in society and therefore that some people may be left behind in, in going online, at least in the first instance, uh, and therefore that government needs to keep open multiple channels in order to also meet the needs of people who are not that technology savvy. Uh, Professor Miriam Lips, uh, thank you very much. Uh, the e-government chair at Victoria University, yeah, that last point's a good one. Uh, there will be a number of people nervous about any push towards more technology, particularly uh, elderly people, because they're going to feel like they're being excluded in some way if they're not passe with that technology. I hear what you're saying when my grandparents were alive and ATM machines were introduced I remember saying to them it's okay and and offering to go down and work through how to put a card in and get money out that was something that was out of their zone and now last time I applied for a passport it was online uh, you check in online how much more of our lives are online and are there is there a sector of society yeah. being left behind? And just one point on the jobs thing this thing really bugs me if they're going to move towards mm. um, more you know e-jobs and take jobs out of the public sector those people, there's got to be some thought given to how we're going to retrain those people. So older, older workers need to be given the chance mm -hmm. to upskill, and that has to be a push as well, because otherwise they just get dumped on the scrap heap. We did that in the 80s, and it's hopeless. Okay. So I hope we see some sort of push there as well.